Hey YouTube, Common Collector here, and today I am finally bringing you guys my budget version of Burning Abyss. Now, Burning Abyss is a deck that has always just sort of eluded me, like I just never built it back when I was in college and this deck came out, and uh, that's probably one of my biggest regrets as far as Yu-Gi-Oh! deck building goes, because this deck is really, really cool, very powerful, uh, just a great control deck, and it uh, doesn't really do anything that's too unfair, it's just like a really fun, grindy game that you can do with this deck. It's a lot of fun. Also, BA is my initials. So, I mean, I got to build the deck. Uh, it's super badass. Love it. Uh, and also, you got to love, like, the mythology or, like, the um, the story of Dante's Inferno and whatnot. So, overall, I think the deck is really cool. Uh, I've seen a lot of deck profiles that don't do a great job explaining this deck. So for you guys who are maybe new to the deck and you're looking to build this budget version, uh, I will hopefully give you guys a pretty good in-depth look at how the deck is run. But for starters, we're going to start off with the new, uh, newly unlimited graph Malabranch of the Burning Abyss. So all of the main deck Burning Abyss monsters have the effect to where if you, um, if you control a monster that is not a Burning Abyss, you have to destroy this card and send it to the graveyard. And then also they each have their own other effects. So, uh, the other effect that they all share is that they can all special summon themselves from the hand as long as you control no spell or trap cards. So in your opening hand, it is nice to see a good handful of them. Then you just special summon them all onto the field and then you can go into crazy link and XZ plays. Uh, and you can only activate one of these two effects per turn to either special summon them or their second effect. So the second effect of Graph is that uh, when he is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one Burning Abyss monster from your deck, except for himself. So he is just really great for... Uh, you know, summoning out monsters from the deck, getting out whatever you need for your engine and whatnot. Then we're going to go on into his counterpart, which is Seer. Uh, he was the other one that also just came unlimited off the ban list. So what Seer does is that when he is sent to the graveyard, he special summons a Burning Abyss from your graveyard. So they just synergize really, really well. Then we have our three copies of Skarm, Malabranch of the Burning Abyss. So what Skarm does, besides its special summon effect, is that... During the end phase of the turn that it is sent to the graveyard, you can add one level three dark fiend type monster from your deck to your hand. So not totally specifically a Burning Abyss card, but in general you're going to be adding a Burning Abyss or just whatever you need. Uh, tour guide can also be searched by this, which is really, really nice. Then I'm going to go on into two copies of Farfa. A lot of people play Farfa at three, but I think it's just fine at two. So with this card, when it's sent to the graveyard, you can target a monster on the field and banish it until the end phase. So it's a little unfortunate that it's just until the end phase. However, the effect to banish a monster and just get it off the field is really nice. If this effect goes off during your opponent's turn, say your opponent is playing like Rocket Guard Dragon or something, and you can like banish the um, the Romulus or something just to get rid of like those Link Arrows and their extension. It can be really, really powerful. Then we'll go on into our two copies of Alec. A lot of people play this at one, so I kind of, I got rid of one of the Farfa to add in an extra copy of Alec because I kept finding myself wanting to get another Alec out, and um, it's just really nice. There's a lot of ways to send this from the main deck straight to the graveyard, so I like having another copy in the main deck. So with this card, when it's sent to the graveyard, you can target one face-up monster on the field and negate its effects until the end phase, which is, again, just really, really nice. Then we have one copy of Barbar. He just does 300 burn damage uh, for banishing up to three Burning Abyss monsters from your graveyard, so uh, you can do 900 damage to your opponent, which is kind of nice just to get a little bit of extra burn damage. Um, plus, he is a big... Uh, 1700 attack beater, so he is just a nice power inclusion for the deck. Then we have our one copy of Libic. He's like probably the most cuttable, but uh, when he's sent to the graveyard, you special summon a level 3 dark fiend type monster from your hand, but its effects are negated. So that does come up every now and then, but if you do end up sending him when you've already kind of gone through your whole combo and your hand is um, a little bit less full, then like he doesn't really do too much for you. Plus, we do run other stuff besides warriors. So now let's, uh, besides fiends. So now let's get on into the warrior aspect, or I should say the Phantom Knights side of the deck. So this is a PK fire build. So Phantom Knights of the Silent Boots is going to be our first for the Phantom Knights. Um, I did not include the new. 
uh, secret rare from the Phantom Rage because I figured for a budget build we wouldn't want to include torn scales. But uh, with this card, if you have another Phantom Knights monster, you can special summon this from your hand, which is really cool. And then also you can banish this from the graveyard to add a Phantom Knights spell or trap card from your deck to your hand. So he just really helps you to get a lot of advantage either on the board or getting these spell or traps into your hands. Then we'll go on into three copies of the Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak. So the important effect with this is its graveyard effect. You can banish it from the graveyard to add a Phantom Knights card from your deck to your hand. So uh, it has to be a The Phantom Knights. So keep in mind that uh, all of the The Phantom Knights uh, include the monsters. However, there is one trap card that is a The Phantom Knights card. So just keep all of that in mind as well, that we can also search for that one trap, and we'll get to that a little bit later. One copy of Phantom Knights of Stained Greaves. Stained Greaves is really nice because he does a little bit of level modulation and whatnot. And then we go on into our one copy of Ragged Gloves. So with Ragged Gloves, he can give a thousand... A Thousand attack power boost to an XZ summon card as long as it is a dark XZ monster. So uh, that's really, really nice. And then also with this card, when it's in your graveyard, you can send a Phantom Knights card from your deck to your graveyard. So just another like foolish burial like effect for the deck. And these guys really synergize with the uh, Burning Abyss cards that they just get you so much advantage when they're chilling in the graveyard. So then we're going to go on into our three copies of Tour Guide. Uh, she is just super good for the deck because, again, with all the BAs, they destroy themselves when you have a non-BA monster on the field. However, with Tour Guide, when you use her special summoning effect, it negates the monster's effect. So it is just really nice for getting them out, uh, negating their effects if you just have to go for a quick link or XZ play. Then we're going on into our three copies of Fiendish Rhino Warrior, basically like the counterpart to Tour Guide. You want to see one of these two in your opening hand. So your Fiendish Rhino makes it so all of your Burning Abyss cards can't be destroyed by card effects, which is super nice, so they just can't even get destroyed by their own effects. And then also he lets you Foolish Burial again when he is sent to the graveyard. Uh, then for our last card, just three copies of Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring because it is a level three monster. This is probably the most expensive card in the deck. And again, like you guys can tailor this to your own budget so you can make this, um, you know, you can make this Ghost Ogres because that's also a level three or you can just make it Effect Veilers or just play more BA cards if you want. But let's get on into the spells, which we only play three of. We have one Foolish Burial, which basically allows you to do anything with the deck because Everything just is so graveyard uh, strong, so I, I really like having the Foolish Burial in the deck. One called by the grave because we just don't want to get ashed on like a really important search. Because if you just land like one card short in your combo, it can uh, be pretty devastating. Then we'll go on into our one copy of Monster Reborn, just because Monster Reborn is super good, brings back whatever you need. And like if you bring back Seer with this or something, and then you like send it to the graveyard again, and then you get other stuff out of your graveyard, like you know, you can just combo off really, really nicely there. One, three copies of Phantom Knight's Fog Blade. So with this card, you can negate the effect of an effect monster on the field. Uh, the only downside is that like there can't be any attack interactions with that card, so they can't attack, and you can't attack that equipped monster. Uh, however, um, it is also nice while it's sitting in the graveyard. You can banish it from the graveyard to special any Phantom Knight monster in your graveyard. Uh, along with our one copy of Phantom Knight's Wing. I have no idea why people sleep on this card. I have seen it uh, recently in like one or two deck profiles. But Phantom Knight's Wing is a card that not a lot of people include. And I don't know why. Because it's really, really nice. At least just as a one of. So it has the same banish effect as Fogblade to special summon a the Phantom Knight's monster. Uh, however, with this card also, uh, when you activate it, you can target a face-up monster on the field. The monster gains 500 attack, and then also the first time that it would be destroyed by battle or card effect for this turn, it's not destroyed, which is super duper good. If your opponent's about to, like, you know, hit you with any kind of a disruption, like they're about to ghost ogre you in the middle of your plays or something, or they're just attacking you in regular battle, this card can really save you. Then for our final card of the deck, we have one uh, Phantom Knight's Shade Brigadine. So with this card, you special summon a level 4 Phantom Knight's token, uh, which is a little bit odd that it's like, you know, that it's a, a level four because we rely so much on level threes. However, there is the modulation uh, of levels that can be done with your, I believe it's the Stained Greaves. 
so he can uh, modulate levels. So uh, he's like a really good card to interact with this card. Uh, there he is, Stain Greaves. So yeah, these two cards interacting together together can help you go into some really nice rank four plays. So that's why it's really strong for the deck. Otherwise, it's just like another generic level four monster. But anyways, let's get on into the extra deck. So for our extra deck, we were playing, of course, the three mandatory copies of Dante Traveler of the Burning Abyss. He is like, obviously like the namesake of the deck because Dante in the story of Dante's Inferno went into hell and then he ascended into purgatory and then to uh, heaven or paradise. So overall, this card is really nice. You could bump it down to two, but I like playing it at three just, uh, you know, for like how much you can grind in this deck. Uh, I, I sometimes do find myself going into that third Dante. So with him, you can detach material and then mill the top three cards of your deck. And then he gains basically 1500 attack from that. So he gets to be 2500 attack, which is just really nice because then you can uh, get him boosted up pretty high. And then also you mill those three cards. So then you can get off some graveyard effects with your Burning Abyss cards, as well as you can do, do some nice graveyard banishing effects with your Phantom Knights engine. So that's why the deck just synergizes so well together. And then also when this card is, uh, leaves the field, then you get to take a Burning Abyss card from your graveyard and add it back to your hand. So he's just really nice. Gets everything kind of going for your deck. Then we have the one Beatrice. So what she does is that uh, you can you basically overlay her on top of Dante. And so with the Beatrice, then you can detach during either player's turn and then uh, basically just Foolish Burial a card from your deck, which doesn't really sound that great. However, uh, just with this deck, like you can uh, so easily send a Farfa or um, your... Uh, your Alec, and then that will get you either like some sort of a disruption, or uh, if you don't have any more in the deck and they're all in your graveyard, then you just send a Seer, and then Seer will special summon them uh, once he hits the field, and then he'll hit the graveyard. So overall, yeah, just Beatrice, there's just so much utility. And then when she gets destroyed by battle or card effect, then she lets you special summon out Dante Pilgrim of the Burning Abyss from the extra deck. So with him, you just uh, d you discard a Burning Abyss card in order to draw another card. And then if he is destroyed by battle or card effect, then you can knock a card out of your opponent's hand. So he's not really the best, but he's just a free monster to go into. And the extra deck isn't super tight for here, so he is just a really nice inclusion for the deck. One copy of Cherubini, so she is a really great inclusion to the deck. She's basically like your Fiendish Rhino. Uh, because Fiendish Rhino, once again, he's the one who stops all of your Burning Abyss cards from destroying themselves if you have a non-Burning Abyss card. So whatever she is pointing to, uh, cannot be just monsters that she's pointing to cannot be destroyed by card effects, which is really, really awesome. And then she also helps you to Foolish Burial from your deck, and then she can boost up the attack of one of your monsters on the field, uh, uh, up to the attack of the monster that you foolish burial. So she is just another really nice inclusion for the deck. I would almost like to play her uh, up at two. Some people cut her, but I think she's super useful and I like playing her. Uh, then for our Phantom Knights engine, we have the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardiche. Uh, this card is absolutely nuts and I can't believe that like they brought it to limited, but uh, it did just get a reprint in maximum gold. So this extra deck is super duper cheap actually right now. So he just helps you to further out uh, output your Phantom Knights engine. Then we have the Phantom Knights of Breaksword, which is just really great for removal. Raider's Knight, which is sort of like your middleman for the Phantom Knights engine. So this is your rank four that you're generally going to be going into. And then with this card, you can uh, detach. And then you go into either a rank three or a rank five of either like Raid Raptor uh, XZ Dragon or Phantom Knights Monster. We're not playing any of the Raid Raptors, but we are playing uh, the Dark Rebellion XZ Dragon for OTKs, as well as the uh, Arc Rebellion XZ Dragon. So basically, your Raider's Knight is going to be going either into your Rank 3 uh, Phantom Knights Breaksword, or your level, uh, or your Rank 5 Arc Rebellion XZ Dragon, which is also just a great OTK enabler. Then for our last of the Rank 3s, we have Leviar the Sea Dragon. And then just for some generic cards, two cards that actually just got reprinted in Genesis Impact. So they're probably sitting at like one or two bucks. Uh, so really nice that these cards are finally budget. We have Nightmare Phoenix and Unicorn. And then also a card that just got another great reprint in Maximum Gold. We have Boral Sword Dragon. So anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile. Uh, maybe I'll be doing some sort of like a combo video on this or something. I've really been enjoying playing around 
with the Burning Abyss strategy. They are super duper cool, a lot of fun to play with, great artwork and whatnot. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the deck profile. Make sure to subscribe if you guys haven't already. Click the, click the like notification if you guys like this. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys thought. We'll catch you later. Common Collector out.